Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Three 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 with another analysis cast, and this time we're gonna have not quite what I normally do, where it's more high-level play. This is actually an unconventional game that I want to go over. Not sure how much analysis I'm gonna do and how much it's gonna be. Holy crap, guys! Look how this thing is being done. Isn't this awesome? It happens to work in this situation, but we'll see. Anyway, we're gonna get started. It's gonna be Seto Kaiva versus Kane, and I should also point out. Seto Kaiba was on last night doing a nice little charity work. He was opening a room for a bunch of new players and basically just teaching them how to play. All right, come in, I'll show you how to play. I think that actually might have deflated their Elo, in fact, come think of it, because I think last night their Elo was somewhere around 1700. But anyway, yeah, they were helping out newbies coming in. So good job, Seto Kaiba. Thank you for doing that. And that's just a good example in general of something good to do in the community. So if you see new players, follow Seto Kaiba's example and just help them out. Anyway, that aside, let's get to the game itself. It'll be on Fissure Whip, or well, Fissure Work in Progress, which frankly has not been worked on very much recently. It's been work in progress for at least a couple years now. I'll just guess it's just Fissure then. I'll get to the game. So the map is fairly... Oh, there we go. Perfect. So the map itself is fairly small. As you can see, there's not very much metal. Like, one, two... Zoom in a little... Actually, no. Keep zoomed out. It's like five metal... Or six metal spots on each side. Each of the metal spots is about 2.3 or so. Ultimately, that means you have about 14 metal per side. Yeah, it's overdrive heavy. And you have to take the center. It, it is... This is kind of low metal, but then again, with enough energy, you can make any map high metal. And I believe there is a geothermal spot around here somewhere. I don't see any. Nope. What am I saying? Though I would know. It's obvious. There are no geothermals. All wind and solar. So anyway, Sotokhav is at the west side of the map. And Kane in the east side of the map has already gone for cloakies, but it's going to go over. So this map is kind of flat. But also has this tiny little path. Has these tiny little paths. It's fairly... I think it's amphib pathable. I think the bottom side here is Amphib Pathable. No, Amphibs are a good choice. Hovercrafts are a possibility, I think, but I'm pretty sure they actually have to go through the bridge. I've seen them on this map before, and they seem to have to go through the bridge. I don't think that's changed at all. So yeah, Hovers are not as good of a choice as they may seem from what I gather. Amphibs are a pretty good choice. We'll see if anyone goes for that. And Cloakies are just sort of a solid-ish choice, although admittedly it's... That's honestly kind of a weird one. I've never been quite sure myself if Cloaky or Shield is the more solid choice. It seems to come down to player preference. Anyway, get on with the game. Seto Kaiba, they have decided... What are they deciding to go for? They haven't actually chosen their factory yet. They're going for Amphib! Okay, so we do have an Amphib player, and Seto Kaiba decided to go for Early Constructor, which is interesting, because as I mentioned before, there aren't a lot of metal spots around here, so I'm guessing this conch is going to be sent up very quickly to the north, while the commander is either going to go forward and try to be aggressive, and the commander is not actually morphing at this point, or the commander is going to try to build up a bunch of energy near the main base. It is a support commander, so more likely to stay inside the base than go out. And then some ducks being built up. While on the other hand, Kane is getting a few glaives up. They currently have two glaives up. They're getting more, as well as a conjurer, which is being used... What was it going to be used for? Building up some defenses, while the commander is going around building up metal. So Kane definitely trying to expand quickly with their commander. Also going for support commander. Well, Seto Kaiba... No, Seto Kaiba is actually expanding with their commander, so both players are doing about the same. And the conch, interestingly enough, is the one moving forward. I do not agree with this. Conches, while... Actually, they're fairly weak. 850 health is probably middling to low for constructors. Like, conches are one of the weakest constructors, but conches... They aren't much stronger. They, however, do have 7.5 metal build power, which is good. Will at least allow the conch to get in and out fairly quickly. But yeah, the commander, as usual, should generally be the one being pushed forward. On this map, though, I think, well, no, on this map, it doesn't matter. The commander is amphibious. Why not go that way? Seriously. Go that way, build it up. So anyway, the conch is moving forward, and at this point, it is not being punished. Kane is not aware. Kane should be aware of this. Nope, isn't aware of this. Radar not in range, and the glaives probably won't go through the south side. But they can. Actually, they very much likely will. So this is very risky. 
Anyway, Soto Kaiba, and this map, it does kind of support defenses. We do have this ramp here, which you can see does work well for defenses. We do have this little ramp here, which admittedly, this side section is bot pathable, as is this whole ramp. So a lot of it's bot pathable. Ultimately though, this is likely to be the place where they attack directly given the positions of the starting bases. And now, Kane not punishing this at all, surprisingly enough, and Soto Kaivo well aware where Kane's forces are. So ultimately, this conch not being punished, but that was close. That was extremely close. And even now, that conch is still at risk. It does have the water to retreat to. That is one big thing to point out, but it is kind of risky. And both players were going for the support com, and that is, once again, a little bit surprising. I, I can see them if they wanted to build a lot of power plants, a lot of solar collectors, maybe wind generators. On this map, let's just double check. Wind generators will make, oh boy, 0 0.3 to 2.5. Yeah, on what looked like the highest point of the map? No, the highest point of the map's over here. And even then, it's 0 0.7 minimum. That is kind of worthwhile. 0 0.3 is really risking it. I don't know if it's going to be used. I kind of doubt it. And Soto Kaiva now finally meeting up. A couple ducks. So we can work out the armies right now. Soto Kaiva has two ducks going on the south side. Meeting up with the Rockos. The ducks will win this fight. While like, they have homing missiles, Rockos do not. Simple as that. While in the north, the Glaives and the ducks can be a bit more even. Both players are aware of this. Yeah, Soto Kaiva... Actually, not totally where this ducks have retreated into the water. While Kane, on the other hand, Kane is actually oh, what is Kane? Kane, sorry, this is Seto Kaiba's point of view. Kane is aware of maybe one of the ducks, not both. Seto Kaiba is partially aware of this. Is I think aware of this turret, but I'm not 100 sure. That might be my own awareness. Regardless, Kane is probably going to lose the south fight, and that's the more important one too. Like I said, these ducks, these ducks here are both very strong. They can just push in. I mean, they dodge the Rocco shots and they will win. Although, unfortunately for them, there is there is this word that will force them to retreat while it's in the north. The ducks, oh sorry, that's an archer mistake. These ducks, however, are ducks. They remain ducks, they've always been ducks, and they will always will be ducks. Because ducks do not have a morph option. Well, on the other hand, no, more ducks being built up. So ducks into boys, which I totally agree with. The use of boys here, especially with the warriors being set up, that is going to be very handy. And even against the Rockos is going to be fairly useful. Now, at this point, I would say Kane will be best served... Well, the warriors are fine against the ducks. But probably best served by throwing in a fair number of glaze in here. Possibly dropping... The thing is, boys are really tough. Dropping a tick or two would be a little bit tricky. And the Glaives... The Glaives basically just soak with fire. Boys do not fire... They have a two-second reload time. They don't fire that frequently. Although even then, honestly, a lot of Rockos could do the trick anyway. But Kane, at this point... Is actually economically even. Both Kane and Seto Kaiba are economically even. Seto Kaiba deciding to go more for the economy, uh, sorry, the energy economy, while Kane going more for metal, and Seto Kaiba also advancing to the front lines. That's what they've been setting up so far, which has actually started to work against them. Although, as you can see, Seto Kaiba at this point in the game was starting to lag out a bit. But yeah, it is working against them. They do have, well, that one metal extractor rebuilding, but that's about it. They're kind of even, but Kane taking the northeast side, Soto Kaiba not taking the northwest side, and is definitely focused on building up metal, building up wind generators. At this point, working out fine, but like I said, 0 0.3 minimum. That is going to be rather difficult to maintain over a long period of time. And now the boys come in. We can double check how that works out. So yeah, like I said, the boys will beat the Warriors. That goes without saying. Whether they beat the Rockos... Actually, you know what? Let's just see that. Rockos, 455 range. Boys, 450 range. So boys are a little bit shorter range. Deal less damage. Fire more frequently, though. And they do have slow. I think it really comes down to projectile speed. Oh, wait. How much do boys cost? Boys cost three times that of a Rocco. That is still kind of tricky. And with the ducks in place, this does not work out especially well. The archers will be moving north, and that is going to be a bit of a problem. If we look at the overall state of the map, Seto Kaiba is taking that north side. Taking it pretty strong, too. There are a couple defenders here. That's going to be a bit difficult to deal with. Kane 
their commander actually taking sorry, not so the Kane's taking the north side, and their commander doing a really good job keeping it, while also putting pressure in the center, and rather surprisingly, instead of Kaiva not expanding, but it's working out because like I said, overdrive. The overdrive is working out, though there is a missing wind generator, which is a little bit important. Not super critical, I mean 3.3 versus 4.5. It would add another medal or so. It's not a bad idea to do, but I don't think it's going to destroy Sotokaiba's game at this stage. Sotokaiba is slightly ahead, and oh yeah, pointing out Sniper, of course. That That is typically a common thing to go for. Go for the Sniper, just one. You'd only need one, but that's also a good idea. Against the boys, I double check Zeus as well. I mean, 1.7 versus 1.4 speed, 240 damage with Paralysis, that would be 600, oh, yeah, that would basically knock, that would knock them out in two shots. Hmm. Yeah, Zeus might actually work as well. Possibly better. I mean, the Sharpshooter would one-shot kill them. That is for sure. 150 under damage against 1250 health. That's a one-shot on the boys. But I don't see that happening, and... On the other hand, the boys can't really take care of it. A nice trick you can do against Sharpshooters, which is kind of an obvious one, but it's one that I actually haven't seen all that often. When the Sharpshooter fires, just force fire, just attack ground on the area the Sharpshooter fired from. You can see where the projectile came from. Force fire on the ground near there, and that is going to be able to deal with it. The boys can do that. Rockers can do that. Most skirmishers can do that. So doing that is a very powerful strategy. And now at this point, I would say Sadokaiva would probably be best served by going for... Whoa! Okay, now this... This... This unit here is the reason why I picked this replay. Despite the yellow battle, despite this odd map, despite everything, although admittedly this game has actually turned out to be a fairly interesting study of Cloakie versus Amph if not the most complete one. Athena. The Athena is... Well... It's kind of a unique thing. You don't see a lot of the... Actually, I can do this. Athenas are not a unit you see a whole lot of. They are flying constructors and resurrectors. They're the only unit other than a commander with the resurrection module to actually be able to resurrect units. They're it. This is it. If you want to get units back, or if you want to turn corpses back into units, you use the Athena. And commanders can build Athenas. I do not believe any workers can. No, workers can. Sorry. Workers can build Athenas. Commanders can build Athenas. They cost a little bit less than a factory. 500 metal as opposed to 600. And they can themselves build units of pretty much every factory. They basically get one representative unit of every factory that they can build. Along with the basic utility units. Like cloak shields, cloaking, teleportation, and oh, okay, and a strider because why not? They're a little bit wonky to set up, and very rarely are they used. But this is going to be interesting because, like I said, they have resurrection options, and if Kane attacks and loses a lot of units, that could turn against them. Heck, at this point, even they Seto Kaiba could go over to the northeast here. Kane does have this territory under their control, but if we look at Kane's oops, look at Kane's point of view. Kane doesn't have radar here. They have line of sight at the moment, but they don't have radar. And Athena's actually remain cloaked as their building. This is really important. So the Athena could go over here and just resurrect out everything. And now Kane will have to deal with the resurrected ducks and archers and everything that they've just killed. They have to deal with it all over again. So Seto Kaiva has a necromancer on their side. This is huge. And I just point out, Athena's also do not. That's all they do. Like they they build, they build well. They have 7.5 build power, which is pretty typical for flying builders. You can also get caretakers and some basic like caretakers, radar, and terraforming. But yeah, they these are not used pretty much ever. But it's very interesting to see them used now. So we'll get back to the game. And Sedokaiba is indeed going over to resurrect those ducks, or at least going over to the ducks, either to resurrect or to reclaim. And that is going to really change this game. I mean, now at this point, Kane has pretty much started playing Shogi at this point. His unit drops right in the middle of their territory. Not much they can do about that. Although Athena as well, thanks to the fact that it is cloaked and basically just running around, getting some nice intel. The entire north side being exposed to the Athena. That is a big deal. Sotokaiva can see everything going on in there, knows exactly what's being built up there. And at the same time getting attacked at the southwest, Kane. Probably not realizing this. I don't think Kane has any reason to suspect an Athena at this point, because why would anyone build an Athena? That never happens. But that is exactly what has happened. And Kane will figure it out eventually, but not right now. Kane is going for this attack, however. 
and we can go over this right now. So Kane, what Kane can do right now, gonna go in with the these units. It should be a fairly easy charge. If these boys regroup, however, if they regroup around here and then fall back up the hill, they should be able to hold these off if they encircle them properly. There are still, I mean, there's 20 metal being pushed into this factory. There are a bunch of boys being built up. That will be very effective. And then on top of that, there are, well, the ducks over the north aren't really going to help out too much. They're probably, they're being sent out more to deal with this. But at the same time, that is still something to distract. If Seto Kava comes in, especially along the back, if Seto Kava comes in as this attack is going and starts resurrecting these warriors, I think that they might be able to flank with Kane's own dead units. That would be really clever. We'll see if that happens, though. At this point, Kane is going to be able to get rid of this boy as possibly. Definitely losing more of their units, though, and like I said, the Athena is there. The Athena is not moving down to resurrect, however. And another warrior down. See, these two warriors could be resurrected to use as a flanking maneuver. And Seto Kaiba is going for the regroup. Going for the regroup, going for the, trying to go for the encircle one. And the Athena is, in fact, going down. It is resurrecting this, and never mind. I was actually wrong. The Athena does decloak on building, because that actually makes more sense. But the boys are flanking. Not even... Just, not even having to resurrect units first. The boys are just straight up flanking. And the Athena realizing it should move back, though. Getting out of the way. Gotta double check the Athena. Because the Athenas are very rarely used. That I can't even remember whether or not they decloak on build. I'm pretty sure they... I was pretty sure they didn't, actually. I'm a bit surprised that they do. But yeah, that... Still, Glaive's coming in. That was a very good counter move. Though at this point, there are... Well, Glaive, Warrior, and Rocco coming in. Sorry, just Rocco's and Warriors coming in. And the archer is trying to be built up. That will not likely be built up in time. The boys are not coming in. These boys on a fight order. A bad time to be on a fight order, I'm afraid. And I think the glaives... These glaives, yeah, they're going to get rid of the factory. But they are going to die in the process. And there is an Athena. And that Athena is now on resurrection duty. So everything Kane's pushed in now belongs to Seto Kaiva. And at the same time, I believe there's some... Re no, it looks like there's not much reclaim going on. There's a bit of reclaim, but not a whole lot. Yeah, another Athena being built on top of that. And up come the Rockos. Up come Kane's old units to be used against Kane himself. Or themselves, my mistake. Seto Kaiba has everything laid out. All that's left now is basically to attack. And another rock comes up. So at this point, Seto Kaiba has shown why Athenas can be quite scary. But Kane is not really set up to defend against them. So Kane does know they exist. Kane has seen them, does not have any gremlins, does not have any any sight of an air switch. There's no evidence of any any attempt at switching factories from either player. Though admittedly, I don't think Setokava is likely to. They're just going to go with the Athenas, I think, for the most part. And yeah, I was right. Athenas do not decloak while resurrecting. They do appear to decloak while repairing, though. And there is a gunship factory, actually. Gunships coming on top of resurrection units. And at this point, Soto Kaiva probably suspects the Athena if they haven't... I mean, they did see it, but they might not have noticed. Sorry, Kane was suspected. They might not have noticed, though. They might think that the commander has a Lazarus device on it, rather than just the use of an Athena. And that would be a more reasonable expectation, but that's not the case at all. There is, in fact, an Athena that is rebuilding everything. Despite Kane's assault, Soto Kaiva is actually quite a ways ahead here. And at this point... Seto Kaiba's attack here, it's basically this here. Actually, I don't even need to pause. It's pretty clear that this attack is not going to go anywhere. There are, the Glaives were the only option that Seto Kaiba really had to worry about. Kane doesn't really have much power to project with these Rockos, especially with the Glaives coming in. The Resurrected Glaives coming in, and of course the Rockos dying are... Every Rocco dead is another Rocco that belongs to Seto Kaiba. I mean, give it time, but yes, it's another Rocco that belongs to Seto Kaiba. The dead glaze are being resurrected. Everything's being resurrected. And working quite effectively. And now, immediately, immediately getting these up. And it looks like... Ah, Soto Kaiba, that was the problem. Soto Kaiba is out of energy. This is something that Soto Kaiba will need to worry about as well. So let's go over the resources as well. So at this point, Kane, little low on metal. They do have a factory coming up. They do have 30 metal pushed into the factory and 30 energy. While Soto Kaiba, having no factory... They haven't really pushed a lot of their metal. They only have the commander used to build, and of course the Athena. Actually, the Athena is pushing... Actually, Athena is pushing 10. Okay, so they do have 20 metal being used, but they don't have a whole lot of energy, which the tile generators are being used to help with. So overall, that should eventually be dealt with, but at this point, the Athenas have to be used more cautiously on account of not being able to cloak. Not yet, anyway. 
Yeah, everything that Kane throws at Sotokaiba is going... Everything that Sotokaiba loses has to die in Kane's territory and be reclaimed. Otherwise, that's death. And Kane prudently reclaiming everything as it is, just to make sure that Sotokaiba has no easy way to take that. But at this point, Sotokaiba is going to be probably... Well, actually, I think Sotokaiba is going to be taking this game. Sotokaiba, like I said, can't really lose anything in their territory. Anything in Kane's territory is lost. Becomes reclaim. Kane can use it to build air, build up more cloaky bots. And the gunship plant has been completed with brawlers coming in on top of that. So at this point, Seto Kaiba's best bet. Get about three or four swifts. Send them around. Try to find the Athena. Maybe even half a dozen swifts. Try to find the Athenas. Take them down. Once those are gone, just build ravens. Seto, sorry, Seto Kaiba, on the other hand, well, the brawlers are a good choice. I'd say it's really the... That or Black Dawns. I'm not entirely sure which one would be the better option. Brawlers have been nerfed a lot. They're really good against base defenses and just against the bases in general. They are no longer as effective as they were against units. But they are still fairly effective overall, and with the ground support, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So Seto Kaiba really playing this quite well. The only thing I could say is Seto Kaiba could probably work a bit more on setting up Overdrive here. The title generators are not a bad choice, but setting up Overdrive from them that would be pretty much necessary at this stage. Or at least, no, it, it's pretty much necessary. It's the only way to get an economic advantage. I mean, Kane has a lot of reclaim to work with. Seto Kaiba is resurrecting rather than reclaiming. That's, they are spending a lot. Uh, they are spending a lot of resources on that. That does help them militarily, but it does mean that they do not have a lot of options. They have to work with either what they've already built or what Kane has sent at them and had die. That's all they have to work with. There's a disadvantage of using reclaim. The Brawlers are a nice support tool, but at the same time, that is only the, well, 20 metal-ish. Really, it's like, well, really it's about 11 or so. Judging by the amount of metal actually being spent. Okay, maybe 15. Still, it is a little bit risky to try to push up, pull out just with that. I don't see that working out. Well, actually, I do see it working out. Do you see it working out fairly well? But at the same time, Seto Kaiba does have to worry if these, if these Athenas are lost. They have no easy way to get reclaimed, and Ravens are the first thing coming in. Surprisingly enough, not using Swift to try to take out the Athenas. The Athenas have really been low priority for Kane, and I do not agree with that. I sort of, I can kind of see why Kane's doing that, because probably thinking, why bother spending all those resources on what's effectively a flying factory? Try to take that out. But the thing is, it is basically meaning that nothing stays dead, which is a bit of a problem. However, at this point, there's no easy way to stop it. It's over the water, and that's where Swifts would come in. Swifts, or Tridents, or anything that is able to fly, is able to counter, and we do have a Black Dawn as well. Seto Kaiba is basically setting up Brawler and Black Dawn. The Brawler has gone to the north to take that out. So at this point, Kane has 20 metal to Seto Kaiba's 30. And the Raven's trying to deal with these Rockos, but like I said, it doesn't work very well. And the Brawler, and the, not Brawler, the Black Dawn, getting a perfect kill, by the way. That was... That was absolutely perfect. That Black Dawn hitting the bridge as the units are crossing over it. Almost all the units are at 30% health or less. That is a massive, massive deal. At this point, there isn't actually much here to stop them, but Kane having just lost their commander, that's another six, sorry, another four metal down. They're down half metal compared to Seto Kaiba, and Seto Kaiba is primarily running off overdrive. But a lot of that also being the harassment of the brawler, and this is pretty much the game. Seto Kaiba, you showed us how Athena's can work. Very well done. Extremely well done, and Athena's actually starting to get a little bit cocky. Moving it really far into Kane's territory. But yeah, just repairing that brawler, making sure it still lives in the brawler at this point is what Seto Kaiba is trying to end the game with, and it looks like that will probably work out. The boys being used nicely to get rid of these bombers, and at this point, that is basically going to end the game. The boys should be able to take this all out. The bombers, they two-shot boys, which isn't really enough when there's Riparian is right there, and Resurrectors right behind them. This is a very scary situation, and Kane does not have an answer at this point. Extremely scary. That is... that's actually game, I think. But yeah, wonderful demonstration of how Athena's can work. Like I said, that's primarily what I was focusing on, was the Athena. And the power of the Athena, and the fact that it is not used very much. It's not used very much. I mean, it costs 500 metal. It's 500 metal. It's pretty much a factory. And the real downside of Athena's is that they are kind of weak. 750 health, not that strong, not when you're dealing with anti-air units. 
And you are also dealing with the fact that resurrection costs... It costs energy for sure, and it can cost metal depending on how much of them have been reclaimed thus far. If you look at it here, here now, yeah, it's costing 12.3 energy. Like It costs energy to, to do the resurrection. It can cost metal if you're dealing with a damaged wreck like these. Like these tiny little debris wrecks. If it's wreckage, it's just energy. If it's debris, it's energy and the remaining metal needed to get them up to their original, I think, their reclaim metal value, but definitely requires metal at that point. So you're basically... You have a nice flying worker, but you are sacrificing reclaim for additional units. Well, turning your opponent's units against them. Countering that means basically getting rid of the Athenas, or possibly trying to essentially build counters to yourself and then trying to out-micro your opponent. But the problem is you are dealing with the fact that your opponent essentially is running a zombie army. Which, a zombie army with cloaked necromancers. Very scary situation. Definitely counterable, but Kane did not go for that air factor until the very end and never went for Swifts. There was nothing done to counter this. Absolutely nothing done at all, which is a bit of a shame. Would have liked to have seen some counters being used there because that would have very likely changed everything. Because these Athenas are pretty much all Seto Kaiba had. At that point, Seto Kaiba didn't have the Amphib factory. They had a decent economy, but they had no other factories. They would have been outpaced in, in military if it weren't for the fact that they had the Athenas. They resurrected their way back to victory, essentially. They got enough defenses from the resurrection, and ultimately they were able to get rid of Kane's forces. Not to mention they also didn't lose many of the boys. That helps, too. That helps a lot. But anyway, that is, I think, going to be it for me tonight. I don't... Like I said, I don't usually do more than one analysis in one night. And I'm sorry if that wasn't the most analytical of my analyses. It was, like I said, meant to kind of showcase a bit of unconventional play with the Athenas. Don't see those very often. You do see pretty much everything else, but you don't see Athenas. You see Lazarus device occasionally, but that is a level 2 module, so occasionally is an operative word. But yeah, they're not used very often at all. But they are very interesting to see when they are used, and so hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight, and thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.